everyone, and welcome to DM Tips and Newbie Tricks. I, of course, am Kyle Viveris, uh, also known as Amnon from the current Your Daily Dungeon campaign. I am joined, as always, by Mr. Eric Stanford, also known as Mel the Wizard. Hey, guys. And then, of course, I'm joined by our wonderful DM, Mr. Ian Cassidy. Hello. Good uh, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening. So if this is your first uh, DM Tips and Newbie Tricks video that you're turning into, the concept of the show is simple. This is supposed to be a companion series to our current Dungeons & Dragons arc going on. So if you're newer to Dungeons & Dragons or want to know a little bit more about being a Dungeon Master in general, you can tune into this show and find out a little bit more. Um, the topic of this show, plain and simple, probably what we should have done last week if we're be- and last time if we're being honest, uh... What are the essential materials required to play Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, guys, so what would you say are the f- essential things that you need to play D and D? So Ian, why, why don't you take that off? Uh, why don't you yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I think plain and simple, the most important thing to have is an imagination is where we should start. Uh, it's a role playing game and it's heavily involved around a cooperative experience and this experience built around having an imagination and being able to tell a story with your friends and uh, this is an important thing is that you're playing a cooperative game it's not dungeon master versus player and that's that that's you need to have the mindset and you need to have the idea that it's an imagination and it's a cooperative storytelling i think that's that's where you should start yeah and that leads into the second thing most central uh you need friends <laughs> or, or people who are willing to play i feel like i, I feel like i i have heard before of like like local game shops that you could possibly go to that like you could meet other people who usually play right yes kyle write that down we'll we'll talk about that uh towards the end of the video i'll put a pin in it that, that, is, that, that is a very good point that, that's me putting a pin in it right there awesome <clears throat> uh so uh, digress. Uh, let's go into what you actually need as far as like material components go. Uh, uh, on Reddit and on a couple forums, you can go online and you can Google this. Uh, Bing it if you're really weird and it's the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, you can find uh, just a wealth of information on getting started with D and D, and people really break it down and itemize it and make it simple for you to get into. Uh, and one of the best recommendations I've seen uh, is actually completely removing all the books that cost money, all the things like that, and just saying, like, how can I get into this for free? Because a lot of us, like normal, don't have money. Or we spend our money on, on valuable things that, uh, you know, a hobby like this uh, can't necessarily require all the time. So uh, the recommendation was to actually go to uh, Wizards of the Coast D&D website, just dnd.com. You Google it. Google D&D, Google Wizards of the Coast, and uh, it'll bring you to the main page, and you can go to Products and scroll through the Products tab of that main page until you come across Basic Rules for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, the URL is as listed if you'd like to catch this. Uh, I'll repeat it slowly. All you have to do is type in dnd.wizards.com slash articles slash features slash basic rules, and it'll take you right there. And I'll put that in the description of this video, or if you're listening to the audio version, it'll be in the the, the episode description. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That'll get you to a short, brief explanation of what the rules are, the premise of the game, and a log of different information that you'll need that includes the player's handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and the Monster Manual. Now, here's the big tidbit here. They have di- files to download of miniature editions of these that have free material in them. You get a mini player's handbook with, I think, four base classes in it, and then a mini dungeon master's rule guide with just your core rules. That's extremely, extremely helpful for anybody who's trying to play this and do this on a budget. It is. It's a, a wonderful wealth of information, and I actually I don't know if you knew about this, Eric, but uh, it it exists. Wizards of the Coast actually does like people playing their game, and they understand that money is a is a barrier. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I got into playing D anD D. 
I don't think I spent any money. I uh, I I think we because uh, we started an edition that was all public domain, which was three point five. Fifth edition is not public domain yet, so it's a little bit different now. Three, but, I don't actually I don't even know three point five is fully public domain because I remember at the time, uh, and we'll go into this. I don't want to digress too much. There was a tool online called D and D Tools, it still exists in many different forms, bounced all over the place. Uh, there was a, an archive of every handbook, every race, class, ability, spell, et cetera, et cetera. And they got hit with the ban hammer because they were using copyrighted material. Uh, and that site jumped from place to place to place to place to place. And I would urge you to use the appropriate materials because Wizards actually does provide you with uh, some free methods to play their game. Yep. I remember using that site a lot there. <laughs> um, and then just a pin real quick in the same topic of, you know, playing for free, getting into it for free. Playing older editions is actually a really excellent way to do that. You, you can, I don't know, some people are cringing at the idea, but it, it is yeah. a very excellent way to do that. If you if you are interested in role playing and getting into something that, that is perhaps not, not something you really want to, you know, get involved in with monetarily speaking, I, I think every single person in this uh, in this podcast right now started with 3.5 uh, with an edition before this, so even Kyle, and he's, you know, yeah. relatively new to fifth edition, right? Yeah, yeah, this is like, this campaign is my first time playing 5th edition. When I first started playing, mm -hmm. I, when Eric taught me how to play, I, I played 3.5. Yeah, I uh, I, I just kind of wanted to touch on that. Like, There are free materials out there that exist, and I think it's really important that you know about them. But let's go ahead and move on to the actual meat of this, the, the core items that you will need to play the game. Uh, I've, I've seen them called a lot of things, the Holy Trinity, um, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that actually comes to mind now that I'm thinking about it, but that's the, that's my favorite one that I've seen on Reddit, the Holy Trinity of D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. uh, the, tri uh, the Triforce. The Triforce <laughs> of D&D. &D. It, really it really is the Triforce of what? Uh, wisdom, power, and uh, knowledge Courage. or something? Courage. Courage, yeah. So uh, starting yeah. off, the number one thing you need, uh, Eric knows what it's going to be, Kyle knows what it's going to be, it's player's handbook. Absolutely. Uh, Eric, why don't you get into detail about what the Player's Handbook consists of and why it's important? All right. So the Player's Handbook is, um, even if you're not dungeon mastering, you should have a Player's Handbook. Obviously, if money is an issue, you know, we discussed that. But uh, this is, uh, I have one right here sitting next to me. This is the Player's Handbook. <clears throat> and this has everything that you need to play the game it has um it has every race what the what that race gets as far as bonuses um and disadvantages uh every class uh and what those classes uh what those classes are good at and what they need um all the all the basic equipment um as far as like rations uh tools um you know basic I think healing potions are one of them, you know, climbing kits, et cetera. Um, personality traits, like backgrounds and stuff, it has all of that. But really, it has every single rule for the game in here. Every single rule. That is the most important part. And um, I, I don't remember exactly where it is, but it starts on, I think it starts on Chapter 8, which is Adventuring. No. Chapter six, customization options. And I believe, um, if you don't mind me cutting it real quick, I believe that it actually gives you scenarios in which those rules uh, yeah. pertain to so that you can utilize them correctly and effectively. Um, <clears throat> the, the player's handbook is going to break down everything for you. It, it really is just an itemized summary of spells, equipment, abilities, characters, races, it is just the totalitary uh, edition of the game. You can play that. You can play the game without any of it. And that's the first thing you should get. Definitely. I I always I may not use it every time we play a session, but it's always great to have. Gotta have it there on 
on hand so that way you can use it as like reference of okay well what does this spell do like what kind of save do the, do, does this guy need to make to for my spell to do full damage like that kind of stuff is really really helpful with uh, with the player's handbook yeah mm-hmm. and, it's, and it, this is um, you know how to use a, how to use ability scores um, how combat works in depth how spells work um, and I mean this has everything that you need and it even has at the end which um, this is kind of new I didn't actually they didn't do this in some of the older editions but it has like some basic creature stats which I can kind of you know, creature stats I think it's in the appendix one of the appendix is uh, I mean but like, all the basic creatures so like if you're if you're a druid and you like to wild shape you want to like turn into cool different animals here it is you want an animal companion here it is you know cool stuff i mean uh, everything that you need in this in this book not only that uh but uh something important to play in the game for y- your players and you is the character sheet and i think the last couple pages of the player's handbook is actually a character sheet that you can pop into a copier and copy and print it is yours. You have the right to reproduce it. Uh, you you purchase the book. Um, I don't know if you have the right to sell it. They'll come at you with pitchforks and torches, but um, well, you can I reproduce it as you want. I don't know if anybody will actually buy your character sheets off of you, but you know, because I've I've seen <laughs> plenty of places online where you can download free character sheets. <laughs> yeah. uh, Wizards, but also Wizards of the Coast on their website. I'm not I'm not sure where it is. But I'm sure if you go searching for it um, on their website, you there is a download, and it downloads uh, the character sheets, and it downloads them in different formats. So they have like a form fillable, like a PDF, where you can just fill it out on your computer, and you can save it on your computer, or they have print versions too. So I think can- I have. I think I actually use a. Uh- PDF that I got from the website that autofills all of my stats and things like that as I punch in numbers, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um, so we. Yeah, so we. Start, so we. Uh, obviously, we said the next thing, like character sheet being at the back of the book. What exactly is a character sheet for anybody who's never played played before? It's just where you retain your information on your character. It'll go over your six important stats, your health your abilities and features uh, on that first main page and the equipment you're carrying. Um, and then on the second page, it's, I think, your spells, spellcasting modifier, abilities, etc., etc. And then the last couple pages are character information, backstory bio, and um, some superfluous stuff. Accoutrements. Yeah, like, you can, uh, I use that last page for bio, people I people meet in the world, I write down names, and I write down all the all the, like magic items and treasure I get. Uh, let's go ahead. So we we've kind of beat this to a, an oblivion. This player's handbook. There's there's a, a good bit more to, to to talk about it, but a lot of the stuff that you need to find out in there, you need to go in there and look through it yourself. Kind of read through it. That's the most important thing to do, especially as a beginning dungeon master or player. Just to read through the player's handbook and familiarize yourself with everything inside of it. So, um, the next item. I would like to discuss is the monster manual. Uh, and I know everyone's like, what do you mean? Don't you need the dungeon master's guide next? And I would say no. And for this reason, okay. the monster I manual, agree. you would agree with it, uh, Eric? Yeah, no, uh, dungeon master's guide is an extremely useful tool, but it is, as far as necessity, it's third on my list. Yeah. Uh, and that's because the monster manual is how you populate your world. It's it's how you 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 propagate this sense of adventure. You you put things in the world for your characters to encounter of all kinds of levels and challenges. Uh, and while other books that have been released supplement this, the Monster Manual is the progenitor of all these things that have been produced. And it's such a wonderful little tool to have, and it's almost essential for a dungeon master to have. Players who have it are kind of cheesing the dungeon master. I'm not going to lie. Uh, if you're a player listening, you don't necessarily need it unless you're trying to to irritate your dungeon master by bringing it and then flip into the book in the middle of, of a fight and going like, oh, we're fighting a Gith Yankee. It can read our minds, guys. Let's all put on our helmets like Magneto. If you're a player, you should never do this. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, if you're a player, you should never look through the monster's manual, especially in the middle of combat. Oh, outside of the game. What, 
Well, uh, uh, this is me genuine question asking. Would an acceptable alter like use of that in game would be like if you were trying to if you had a spell where you were summoning something or like uh, you could bring in uh, there are spells that do that right that bring in something from the monster manual right i think the quickest reference to that would be uh druids you know wild shaping at animals and uh my quickest answer to that is uh if you're comfortable just let your dm give you the information on the animal if the dm is comfortable with you having a monster manual to reference your creature that's fine um and you know it's not really cheating per se to have a monster manual on you at the game in case you know you want to just look at it and if you're not being meta about it and you know cheating i guess i don't really care if you have it with you do you i mean do you feel the same eric um i i mean like when i when i run combat usually like i mean if i if i present a monster like it's it's kind of like some of the players might know what it is and they might know how it works but uh if you have good players which i do they even if they know what it is and know how it works, they they pretend like they do, they have no idea. Mm-hmm. And usually, they will make checks to see. It's like, okay, do I know? Even if they know as a player, they make checks to see if their character knows this. And then, if they have no idea what the monster is, if they may, I, I've done this before, and I've done this a few times. Like, I want to know what this creature is that we're fighting. Rolls like a natural twenty on that, like you know knowledge nature or knowledge arcana or whatever it is and i'll I'll just give them the monster's manual open to that page and i'll be like you have you have one minute to look at it interesting choice and then i'll just take it back so then they like they have all the knowledge that they could gather in one minute about this monster yeah, I remember in that early, that newbie session that uh, Eric ran for me and a bunch of other people, we all had copies of the Monster Manual. And like when Eric would be like, okay, you got this, this kind of build. And me and at least I know one other guy would just like flip through real quick and try to see if we could figure out what kind of, we, we were assholes. We were being assholes I, about it. I gave, uh, I, gave, I gave these really, really good descriptions of the monsters and like tried to, Describe them as best as I could. Because we were all very uh, new. In that picture, and then they would just flip through the monster manual. And I didn't know this because they were, I think y'all had just PDFs on y'all's computers. Yeah, yeah, we were all sitting in the same room and, like, on so our I team. had no idea that they were doing this until they were, until like, um, until they started like whispering to each other, like, hey, this, this is what this monster is good at. Like, we should, we should counter that. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So, um, uh, t- touching back on the topic, just to kind of do one one last thing of why the monster manual is a really important tool and how it relates to everything else around it. It's an important tool because it, it helps you populate your world, and it relates to everything else because it is basically your world in a book. Uh, you've got all the rules and stuff for the previous book, and you've got everything that you, you can use to build you know, the environment, and then now the monsters are what you populate that environment with. But it also helps you to build creatures of your own design and your own machinations eventually and uh you can use these creatures that you've custom built from your knowledge of the monster manual and your understanding of challenge ratings which come with the monster manual to help advance and experience uh much much more so uh and modules uh campaigns that dnd puts out will often incite you to do that yeah i mean it also uh in the back it has uh so you have the monsters all the all the different monsters and that's the huge uh section of the book but in the back it also has npc npc classes not classes but npcs that have that you know are worthy of a stat block like a spy or a hermit uh yeah or an archmage you know um, and those can be really useful uh for quick combat encounters where you know, maybe you didn't expect, as as a DM, you maybe didn't expect them to fight this person, but they ended up doing it. Um, and you can <clears throat> throw something together by just looking in the back of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, kind of going off this, if you're a DM, like, you know, this, the player's handbook is really important. Like I said, it has every rule about combat in it and that's really what the monster manual is for it's mainly for combat but 
it's got other purposes as well. But every rule about combat, and then there are monsters that can break these rules. So knowing the rules and knowing that, you know, I want to put this monster in the game, knowing that that monster does break that rule because it has that special ability, mm -hmm. you know? So that they go hand in hand. So that's why this is above this, above the monster manual. Mm -hmm. Because it has those rules. And then monster's manual lets you populate the world and then you, you know that those monsters are are going against those rules, but they have a reason. So, um, I guess uh, after Andrew, the next thing in the list is the Dungeon Master's Guide. And uh, the reason this is third on the list, and uh, why I think it's still in the, the core three things you should definitely have as a Dungeon Master, is because, one, it's all supplemental stuff. It, re it really is. It's all, like, addendums to rules or add-ons to rules or extensions of rules. It gives you a lot more stuff to add to what exists uh and all that stuff exists in the game no matter what even if you don't have the dungeon master's guide uh and the dungeon master's guide is there to kind of act as a lens for you to focus that beam of your imagination through uh, and uh, a lot of dungeon masters don't really even need the dmg to actually be able to, to do that especially if you're running out of a module we'll get into those in a little bit but modules act basically as a mini dungeon master's guide they give you all the rules they all all these pre pre-made encounters and stuff like that and they give you uh ideas to work with without having to go and create them yourselves the dmg just gives you a bunch of ideas a bunch of tools to create these encounters create these experiences for your players and then it also gives you uh, a metric shit fuckload of items and uh, <laughs> materials <laughs> it gives you it gives you way more stuff than you could ever possibly need uh and you'll wind up using things you realize you never wanted to ever touch in your life like a deck of many things <laughs> i i am waiting for you to introduce a deck of many things into our campaign it uh you'll all be right, waiting all right. long all right don't don't get me started on this this that <laughs> item don't get me started on it it's the most broken item in the game because it's it's just I hate it. I hate it. I love it so much just because of the uses that I've seen it, like people using it. It's the stupid I, shit I have, that happens. Can I can I tell a little story, Ian? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's a yeah, short sure. one. It's a short one. I was playing in a campaign and out of nowhere, uh, our dungeon master uh threw in a deck of many things. I'm playing uh this this elf ranger. Uh and I was like opposed to pulling from this deck, mainly because of me as a player, I just I just don't like this item. So I was opposed to pulling from the deck, but everybody else was. And I was just like, you know what? I will pull one card. One card. I pulled one card, and mean? that card gave me three wishes. Oh my <laughs> god. That character never died before that game ended. And by the end of the game, he had three wishes. Damn. Never used them. <laughs> never used them. I never had to, but the DM tried so hard to get me. Like he'd kill he'd kill player characters to try to get me to wish him back. I'd be like, nah. 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 It seems, it seems like the kind of thing that a, a dungeon master would monkey paw on you. Yeah, I've I never use them. I just I just have um. So, uh, Eric, let's go ahead and, and, and break down the most important things that you'll find in the Dungeon Master's Guide and why why it's it's a good supplement to the first two books. Um, so I think the most important thing that the Dungeon Master's Guide does uh, definitely definitely helped me when I was starting to DM um, because I, I read through that book several times. Um because I really want to be a good DM. Uh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to read the book several times. But um, world building, it, it has a whole section on world building. It's very bare bones, and it's very, it's very like, I wouldn't say cut and dry, but it's very bare bones. It's very like, here's the structure of how to build a world, and it doesn't go too terribly in depth with it. And that's kind of the point, because it gives you the it gives you the the ideas and stuff to kind of be able to start 
world and then build off of it. And then so, so I think a way to, to make it as like a succinct statement is that it gives you optional rules, guidelines for customizations, you know, lots and lots of magical items, uh, and a plethora of tables for that world building that he's talking about. Like there are just tables after tables after tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide that give you all kinds of optional ruling, all kinds of things. Like, let me just flip to a page in here, and I'll, and I'll tell you one of these tables. I'm sure there's one. Astral color pools. There's a table for pools on the astral plane of different colors of these pools. Okay. Flip to another page. Mm. I, there, what? there are some, some tables in there that... Here, here is an awesome one. Combat and encounter difficulty and XP character level for that. So it gives you a, a table that breaks down character XP based off of the difficulty of the encounter. If you want to do XP that way. Yeah, we talked about how you how we doled that XP in a previous video. Here's another freaking way that the DMG gives you. Yeah. That and that's that's what this book is. It's just lots and lots of supplemental rules that build upon the first two things. Uh I really don't think that there's actually anything else in that book that we can cover that uh, we have the time to. The Dungeon Master's Guide is its own territory of, of, of video topic. It's so big, so expansive, and covers so many different things. Yeah. That it's 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 worth its own its own time. I, yeah. The Player's Handbook and the Monster Manual are the same way, almost, but the Dungeon Master Guide especially. Yeah, if y'all want us to do a video on just the Dungeon Master Guide, just let us know. So I guess the next thing to move on to is all the supplement material that exists in the world. Uh, we're not going to go into depth about it. We're going to just tell you what it is, where, where to find it, how to get it. Uh, we started off with free content uh, with the Dungeon Master stuff, the Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, etc., etc. Uh, and I want to mention this before we go any, anywhere farther. There is actually free supplemental material that D and D that the Wizards of the Coast puts out every month, and it's called Unearthed Arcana. And it's supplemental rules, supplemental races, supplemental classes. It's all play tests, so it's not official. You can't bring it to an Adventurers League table without uh, the Dungeon Master okaying it. Um, but it exists. You can go to the same website. You, actually, you can actually type in Unearthed Arcana or Arcana, however you want to pronounce it, on Google, and it'll take you straight to that page. And there's, what? It's been three years, four years since um, this edition came out? Yeah. So three or four years worth of, three or four years worth of test material? That's yeah. a good bit. And a lot of that, not a lot of it, but a good portion of it has actually become legal material to use and has been put into books. Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Yeah. Xanathar's is basically just a mind child of unearthed arcana material. Yeah. What, except, except for Rangers. What's y'all's opinion on, on bringing some of that, like, playtest stuff into your games? Like, if you want, if some somebody in your group wanted to bring in, like, uh, I know uh, Matt Mercer has a Blood Hunter <laughs> class that, that he put on there. Uh, we start getting into the homebrewy territory when we mm. start talking about about stuff that people other than on un, other than uh, wizards put out puts out. Uh, and I'll be the first to tell you that homebrew material can actually be very game ruining. Um, and I would say tread carefully. Um, and then even still, I've I did an unearth uh, I let somebody do a, a psionic class. I don't know if you were in that one shot, Michael. Uh, Michael was playing. Uh, 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 one of my players from a previous session was playing a, a Scion on North Arcana called The Immortal, and it was all about health regeneration and temporary health. Uh, were you in that one-shot, Eric? I think you were. You got obliterated. That was my Predator one-shot. Yeah. No. No, that was... It might have been a Predator one. Yeah, you were in a big maze. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was... I remember... It was, it was busted. <laughs> it was hyper-busted. That's my that's that's my concern with Unearthed Arcana is that you read it very carefully and Fair. don't put it don't put it into a campaign until you're absolutely positive that it. it won't bust anything. Fair seems like it'd be like one of those things like hey I'm interested in, in trying out this thing maybe run it by your DM first before you're just like mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing. 
Uh, yeah, really, w- w- what I'm mentioning it here for is for Dungeon Masters who need to know about it, so mm. that when somebody shows up at your table without having informed you of it, and there's a Warforged sitting at your table, uh, and he's playing uh, a Warforged, uh, what's that, Artificer class? A Warforged Artificer, you're not going to look at it and go like, did you just make a gun barrel out of your shoulder? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a construct, I'm a living construct. I can make guns on my shoulders. It's like, okay, war machine. Basically, basically my, my thing about supplemental material, if, if there's something from, uh, like, Under Attack or um, a, if it's a homebrew thing that somebody else made, just if you run it by me, I'm going to look at it, and if I look at it and I say that is ridiculous, then probably going to say no. But <laughs> I've said yes a few times. I've said yes a few times. Um, mainly to Ian, because Ian usually will be like, "This is this is a pretty balanced thing." I think Eric will be okay. Either <laughs> that, or you know that I'm going to be on the nose with the character and be like, "Hey, look, man, this is totally busted," but I want to see how much I can break it. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've let you. I've let you go crazy before. I, you did better. not. You did not meet this character, but there was a playtest character I made. This is an ag- excellent example of this. Uh, pre-existing rules that I used to add to this character to make him busted, and this class actually became released in Xanathar's. Uh, it's a barbarian, and it's a storm barbarian. At that, they get an aura around them that does uh, damage to anybody who's trapped inside of it, out to 10 feet, I believe. Uh, and there's three different kinds of auras. Uh, there's a feat in the player's handbook, and feats are optional rules. You don't have to use them. But I was using it because uh, my friend uh, Q was very okay with it. I built a Sentinel build with this, Eric, with Polar Master as well. <laughs> I could basically lock people down, constantly deal damage to them, and then lock them down again inside my aura. And I was basically dealing like 20 or 30 points of guaranteed damage every round, even if I missed my weapon attack. Yeah. Jesus. That's awesome. It was... It was ugly. It was really ugly. And uh, he thought it was the funniest thing because the character was like as dumb as a board. <clears throat> but yeah. But with, that's a good with, example of that. With supplemental material, uh, it, if you're a player, just talk to your DM. If you're a DM uh, and, you, and you know you don't want any of that supplemental material, tell your players straight up. Tell your players, like, this is what's allowed. Mm-hmm. Just restrict you restrict the book usage. You had to do that in older editions, especially in three point five. But in this edition, you've got a lot of stuff that's new, and you you can be made aware of it now. Uh, any and all books. We're not going to cover every single one. I'm probably just going to have Eric mention his favorite, and I'll mention my favorite supplemental book. Uh, but any and all books that get released afterwards, you can go to their website. You can go to dnd.com and click on products, and they've got. A host of stuff from books to miniatures to dice to um uh let's see i think one of my favorite supplementals is actually a grid that they released recently it's a whiteboard type grid you can draw on it and then erase it it's a just dry erase it's awesome i love it it's and it folds out it folds out real real big i don't want to it folds out like basically three fold by three fold and it's quite big nice i really yeah i really enjoy it and then over here I'll uh, rotate the camera for those of you who are watching. Uh, is that a good view, Kyle? Yeah. Uh, I've got a Dungeon Master screen here. I don't have an updated version of it. Uh, but the Dungeon Master screen is basically just a fold-out screen. Uh, this is the original edition. They released a reincarnated version. That's awesome. I like it a lot. But a lot of people think Eric has one has a custom-made Dungeon Master screen. It's really essential. You actually do need this. It's really important to have one of these as a DM. Yeah. Uh, but you can make your own. And I've you seen- can uh, now the one I have is actually it's not it's not like a custom made or anything it's actually just it's uh, I really like it because um, the only thing <laughs> that I like about that one is it's shorter mm-hmm. but mine my and mine's kind of tall mine's like almost like a like a binder height um, but what's really <laughs> cool about it is it's got slits in it so um if you want like it's got like pre-made like stuff that the players can see and it's very very bland but you can replace that with anything you want and then as far as what you want to see on your side of the screen 
as far as like what tables you want and what rules you want to be there and everything you can take out the ones that they give you and just make your own like you can just print it out and just slide it in mm -hmm. i love that uh yeah no more no more shoebox lid days huh yeah i oh, i i dm'd with a shoebox for the longest time as my dm <laughs> i had a shoebox <laughs> and that was my dm screen it was like it was like this big and it was and i it had nothing written on it it was just so i could roll dice that's all it was for <laughs> it's all it was for i got I, you should remember this Kyle. yeah I'm, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah that I remember my roommate threw it away one time and I made a new one and I just wrote Eric's DM screen, please don't throw away. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only thing written on it. Good. All right. Uh, so we've touched on uh, like official material you can get your hands on. Uh, you know, you're going to need a set of dice. You're going to need, um, as a DM, I like having up to three or four sets of dice. Because I'll need some dice for advantage and disadvantage. I like having two sets of dice just for that. But then I also like having dice if I'm having multiple NPCs on the battlefield. Or I'm having like a bunch of groups of really crappy NPCs and like one boss. I like to have some dice set aside from them as well. So I can differentiate who's rolled what in the past, stuff like that. Uh, if I've got, you know, four sets of dice being rolled at the same time, it's nice having them color-coded and separated. It helps me really break down combat. Now, as far Much as... Easier. Now, as far as like the dice that you do need, and uh, I think we did discuss this in the last video, mm -hmm. but basically you just need this. It's this set right here. It's just a D20, a D4, a D6, two D10s, two D10s, a D8, and D12. And you can go to most of your local game shops and they sell them in these sets. They just sell like these sets of them. Also, yeah, Amazon sells like dice bags. Yeah, you can buy dice bag. The first dice that I ever got, I got a bag of a hundred dice for just fifteen dollars. Yeah. Um, and like this, this right here, this cost me about eight bucks. Um, mm -mm. so like, it's. I mean, you're getting way more dice. These are a little bit better made, a little bit more balanced. Um. But I mean, also, if you're like, because we're talking about going cheap here, uh, if you have a smartphone, you can download an app, a dice rolling app. That's what I use. Uh, if you have um, access to the internet, they have, you can just Google search dice roll. And Wizards Wizards has an official dice roll. I and mean, that's what I use sometimes for just rolling character cells yeah. when I'm in private. Uh, you just Wizards dice roll, you can just Google that. I do want to mention that Wizards also does have an official product, an official D and D uh, app. I think called D and D Beyond. I think they also have Dragon Plus, but I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I just know that it exists. But I they have. I have they, Dragon Plus. I've heard a lot but, of good. I've heard a lot of good things about D and D Beyond, but maybe that's because I'm a sucker for marketing from uh, Critical Role. I haven't. I haven't even uh, fooled around with it all that much. I know it, it's it's new. It, I think it's less than a year old. It was in beta. I think last summer or last last spring something like that and it's it might, might be on the market now i'm not familiar with it yet i haven't just i haven't fooled around with it yeah, um I another know this was a thing. I, another I, another I, online I, tool that i use uh, i think we may have mentioned it once before in the last video was roll 20 i've used roll 20 for a long long time it exists it's a it's an excellent tool it's completely free if you want it to be you can subscribe if you want to get the extra goodies and tools in there uh i think subscription fees last it's either 50 bucks for like a, a just a membership basically and you get a bunch of like tools or it's a hundred bucks a year for like the premium stuff uh they deliver you steaks to your front door they they <laughs> rock your children to sleep <laughs> and like just, just to name a few things like uh, things that we've named as part like kind of essential things that you need to play well, let's just kind of like let me just make a short list of of the things that roll 20 provides it provides a dice roller a very good one at that um it provides a grid character sheets character sheets um you can buy modules you can uh, buy you can entire buy, modules you can buy entire modules and they upload the entire module with all the maps everything on roll 20 for you to use as the DM. tokens tokens so, and stuff like that it's 
I think I think that they have a partnership with D&D. I'm not sure, but I would imagine that's the only way they can get their hands on stuff like that. Yeah, Roll20 was extremely helpful for when I was first learning how to play. Just, like, having that all condensed into basically one area was super, super helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's see. Probably the best way... The best way to play online. Now we don't use it during our podcast and YouTube when we play your daily dungeon, uh, mainly because there's not a, we don't we don't really have a way for y'all to see it, uh, especially if we're doing an audio only version. So we don't use it. But um, if you're playing online with a group, I've used it all the time playing online with a group. It's it's fantastic. Roll20 is actually very well equipped to handle uh, YouTube ports, and people use Roll20 all, all the time in in D and D uh, YouTube videos. It's it's such a common thing, and I, I see it all the time. And I'm like, hey, I've used that, hmm. and you can get a lot of inspiration from people who use Roll20 on uh, <laughs> oh, I do that. On, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, Eric. Any, anything you feel like we haven't touched on as far as materials that are essential? We've gone through um, the essential three books you need, the free books, the free areas you can get your free stuff from, uh, your free supplements, and then your paid for supplements, uh, and then all the extra goodies and, and materials that come with the, on the side from dice. I like having a pen and paper and a pad. Uh, that's you know a no-brainer. You're gonna be doing a little baby math, and then you'll be doing some. You'll be wanting jotting down notes as a dungeon master, and players should have that as well. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to mention my favorite uh, supplement book to come out as of late because I, th- I feel that it's – if I could add one more book to the Essential Trio, I'd, I would add this one, and it would be um, – it'd be Xanathar's because Xanathar's is not only a supplement book, but it's an expansion on the rules. It gives you more rules to work with. It gives you more classes to work with. It gives you – does it give you any other races? Do you know, oh, Eric? No, it does not give you any other races. It gives you more archetypes for the already current classes so no mm-hmm. new class but a lot of different options for the current classes uh it has uh optional rules it ha- it goes more in depth into like um certain rules that aren't very aren't really touched in touched on in the player's handbook like how to better use tools which i feel like is very very helpful a lot of time because if like a player wants to use, be really good at with tools that help that helps having extra rules for those um it has more magic items but most of them are just mundane so they're more just silly but some are useful mm-hmm. um, and then like it's just, it's got like uh a, you can roll a d100 uh, pick a race, roll a d100, and it gives you a random name. Um, it's got extra spells. It's a really, really good. It's got expansions for almost everything. Yeah, it's it's a great, great, great book. I, I would say um, that as far as like supplemental material goes, that's my favorite book. Eric, is is that one also yours? Or do you have a different one? I'd say uh, as a player. It's definitely my favorite. As a DM, I really like it. But I think as a DM, if uh, if I had to pick a favorite, like an absolute favorite, um, it'd probably be Volos because Volos gives you more monsters. More monsters is, is fun. I, I like... It gives you a plethora of, of playable races as well. So yeah. many. It gives, you it, gives- more, it gives you more races to play with. Uh, it also gives you a lore, 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 lore on on all the, the monsters you fight. Lots of lore on on the different types of monsters, like uh, even the basic monsters, like just orcs, goblins, hobgoblins, uh, kobolds, lizard folk. Uh, it, I, I really like that book, I and mean, I I reference it a lot whenever I'm like prepping sessions because mm-hmm. it also has like you know like you have orcs and you even have like different like orc commanders and captains and generals in the play in the monsters manual but then it's got like uh i can't remember what it's called and i wish i had the book next to me so i could look at it but it's got one orc in there that it's just like it's it's like a 
kamikaze work. It just, it's like, oh, it's like the, uh, it's, it's like, like, like the looting, uh, in the two towers. That yeah, just it's just like these oozing bubbles uh, coming off of it, and it just runs in and explodes. Oh, it's the it's the plague orc that starts yeah, sick and yeah. sickens itself. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and um, I, just, I just think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, then I guess that would be my answer as well. As a, as a player, Xanathar's. As a dungeon master, Volos. So if you're listening in, check out both those extra supplemental books as getting next, because they add a wealth of information that, you know, the other books have. You know, Sword Coast Adventures Guide has its things that it does for you, gives you information on, the, you know, a Forgotten Realm setting, but it, it's less, um, it's more focused. While Volos and, and Xanathar's gives you a lot of a lot of stuff to work with that's expansive. Um, Kyle, I, I feel that we've we've um, touched on a lot of stuff. Is there anything that you feel um, in your notes that we that we've missed or we'd like to hit some something? No, else? yeah, y'all actually covered more uh, a lot more than was originally planned so that's always great um you guys even went into our uh dungeon master question of the show which was what essential (laughs) message what essential materials are needed for becoming a dungeon master so we don't really need to rehash all that again because i think you guys did a really great job of explaining Mm -hmm. it in the first place but if in the future if you do have a dungeon master related question for Ian and Eric head on over to widenerd.com slash contact and send us your questions and we will we'll shout you out on the show read your question aloud and we'll be able to uh, see if these two DMs can slide into your DMs no no <laughs> yes no I don't know where you're going with that but <laughs> we're gonna we're just gonna pretend that didn't. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I didn't do that too. Maybe I'll cut that out. Probably won't though, because it's too good. Um, but I think that's good for uh, this week's episode. Obviously, this is a replacement uh, of this uh, week's episode of Your Daily Dungeon. Our regular episode will be back for next uh, week. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and every other YouTube buzzword there is. Uh, Eric and Ian, thank you again so much for doing this video with me. And we'll catch you next time. See you later. Strike strike that Zeus-like pose.